Hello, you're on Pope's spot. I'm George. Welcome to episode 3 on this series on setting up infrastructure foundations with Terraform and AWS. And on this episode, I will show you how I utilize the Terraform module that I've written in the previous episodes to stand up my own custom VPC in AWS. On this VPC, I'll be creating public and private subnets. And once all these are stood up by Terraform, I'll show you how they look in AWS Web Console. So if this episode and this channel lines up with your interest, click the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So let's start coding. On this episode, I'll be standing up the actual infrastructure in AWS. So I need an AWS account. I will also be using Terraform Cloud for my remote backend. So I also need a Terraform Cloud account. The AWS resources that I'll be standing up will cost some money when kept running. So if you're following through, make sure you destroy your infrastructure once you're done or if you don't need them anymore. I'm going to make my changes on the same repository that I've used for this series. So firstly, I need to make sure that my local copy is in sync with what's in remote repository. And now I can start creating a new branch for my changes. Once again, notice that the branch name on my terminal changed from main to the branch that I just created. I'm going to use my previous code as a module. So first thing I would do is clean up my Terraform configuration file. I need to do some cleanup on my locals.tf. I will need to update this file to merge tags defined in here with a set of tags that are passed as a variable to the module. And now I need to go and head to my variables.tf and set the definition for this new one. I'll set the default value for this variable to an empty map. The next cleanup that I need to do is to delete files that are not required in a Terraform module. I used the region variable inside the providers.tf and so since I don't need that file anymore, I should also remove the region variable inside my variables.tf. So what I'll do next is create a directory in here called example. And this is where I'm going to put my code changes. Terraform is very directory specific. So what this means is that when I run Terraform command in a directory, the process will read for any Terraform configuration files inside that directory only. And the only time Terraform process reads from other directories or other places where your Terraform configuration files are is when you put a directive in your code to do so. So this is using modules block. So let me show you what I mean. Let me cd to the new directory that I created. And inside this directory, I'll create my templates by running this command. Again, this script that I just ran is just something that I have set up just so I have all these Terraform configuration files that I can build from and I don't have to manually create. Them. So on the Explorer on my VS Code, if I expand this example directory, it now contains some template files that I can start from with my setup. And now I'll go ahead and open my main.tf and start writing my code. I need to set the source property on this block to tell Terraform which module to use. So this is the directive that I was referring to earlier. This is where it tells Terraform to go to another place and read the Terraform configuration files on that directory. So I'll set the source property and point it to the root of my repository. Unfortunately, because I'm inside a child directory, my pre-commit hook will not work on the example directory where my new set of Terraform codes are. But for now, I will run my Terraform validate inside this directory. So my Terraform validation failed with some errors. So let me expand my terminal a little. So the errors that we see here are for variables that I have set as required when I wrote the Terraform module that we are using. So let me start fixing this. So I'll go ahead and save my changes and run my Terraform validation. So these are the only required variables that I need to provide, but I would like to see all the variables that I can pass to this module. So let's open my Explorer, go to the root of this repository and open variables at here. So I'll start setting up my resource identifier. And then the next variable that I need to define is the availability zone count. And the next variable is single NAT gateway, private subnets, 
and lastly tags. The value that I'll assign to my tags property will be derived from a set of tags that I've set inside my locals.tf. So now if I open my explorer, span example, and then go to locals.tf, the tag property will be deriving the values from here. And if I need to enrich these tags, I can add new entries in here, like say for instance, and any other tags that you want to use to be able to identify the resources that you're creating. Now, I'll set my VPC cider block property based on a value that I'll store inside my locals.tf. I'll show you why I'm doing this in a minute. But for now, I'll go ahead and define this parameter inside my locals.tf. This is the cider block that I will end up assigning to my custom VPC. So now let me go back to my main.tf. I will also set the values for my public subnet and private subnet from local parameters. And now I'll head to my locals.tf to define those local parameters. The way I will derive the public subnet is through a Terraform command called CIDR subnet, which is a convenient way of calculating IP range allocations. So in here, I'll define a local parameter that will hold the superset CIDR block that I'll end up assigning for my public subnets. I will do the same thing for my private subnets, but instead of using 0p, I'll use one as a new bit component for the CIDR cut. Now, I need to go back to my main.tf and define the source of my availability zone. I will use another local parameter for this. I will be using multiple NAT gateways, so I need to drop the single NAT gateway property. And then in my locals.tf, I'll set the AZ count parameter to 3. Next thing I would do is add a code that derives my public subnet. This will involve extracting CIDR blocks from the public superset that I've defined earlier based off the value of AZ count, which at the moment is set to 3. And then I'll do the same thing for deriving my private subnets. And now I'll save all my changes and validate my code change. Before we continue doing anything else, I'm going to commit my changes to the local repository. Notice that my terminal has not turned green, which is usually an indication that something is not right. And this is because I only committed the changes that I've done inside the example directory. I've also made some changes in the root of my repository. If I run git status, it shows me a number of files that need to be committed. The next thing I'm going to do is set up my Terraform backend. So I'll use my Terraform Cloud account for this. I actually created a video on how to set up Terraform Cloud as a backend for my Terraform code, which you can access here. But on this video, I'll go straight to setting up the content of this file. And then now I need to update my variables.tf and set a default value for my region. Now I'll save all my changes and then commit that to my local repository. So my pre-commit hook failed and reported some errors. So let me go ahead and fix that. Save my changes and commit to my repository again. This is the part where I run Terraform commands to spin up the infrastructure in AWS. So firstly, I'll export AWS profile. And then I'll set the environment variable TF workspace and set the value to main. And now I can run Terraform in it. But before I do that, I need to be inside the example directory. I'm getting an error here after Terraform hitting. It's actually complaining about missing workspace, which is expected. Now I'm going to create the workspace. I can now go ahead and run Terraform Cloud. I need to go and connect to my Terraform Cloud and change the execution mode of my workspace from remote to local, since I'm running this on my local machine. So let me switch to my browser and then go to Terraform Cloud. And then there are two things that I'd like to fix here. First, I need to open the workspace that I'm using, which is the first one, which says Network Infrastructure. And then I need to go to Settings, General, and then manually change the name of this workspace. And then scroll down to the execution mode, and then I need to change this to Local, and then save my changes. Now, for these changes to take effect, I'll switch back to my VS Code. In here, I need to fix my backend.tf 
and add the missing dash, save my changes, and then commit my changes to the local repository. Now I go back to sample directory again. And now I need to run Terraform init once again, but before I do that, let me open my explorer. I want to make sure that this is deleted before I run Terraform init again. And then remove the log HCL file as well. And then inside the example directory, I'll run Terraform init again. Let me clear this. Terraform init is successful. Now I'll run my Terraform plan once again. So this error message here usually pops up when I have not set my providers that they have properly. So let me go ahead and fix this. Set the region property using the variables that I've defined. Commit my change into the repository. And then run Terraform plan again. So we've got new set of errors. So let's have a look at them. We've actually got three errors. And they all seem to be because of missing property assignments. It's on line 6 on locals.tf. I'm missing reference to the name property for this. Let's have a look at the next error. It's on line 25 on main.tf. And it's a missing reference to the ID property. And then the last error, line 27, also missing reference to the ID property. Now go back to the root of my repository and then commit my changes. So we got another error. And it's meant to be names instead of name. Save my changes and then commit to the local repository. Now cd to example directory and then run Terraform plan again. But this next error here complains about the parameter used inside the for each block. So the local that AZS parameter is in fact a list which a for each block is unable to interpolate. So to fix this, I need to convert this list into a cell. Save my changes and commit to my local repository. So let me cd back to the root, then cd to example, and then run my Terraform plan again. I will do this iterative process of fixing errors until I get the plan to complete successfully. So first error complains about line 68. The index function cannot be executed properly because of some mismatching of parameters. So I need to pull out all the keys that's inside this object and then find the index of what I'm trying to search out of that list of keys. So let's look at the next one. And it's the same thing. So all we need to do is pull out all the keys from those objects and, and then the index would work. Save my changes and then commit to my local repository and then run Terraform plan. This is the same error that we've seen earlier and we know how to fix it. All we need to do is switch that into a set and then run Terraform plan again. Now we have a clean Terraform plan. So now I need to commit all my changes that have not been committed into the local repository yet. Give it an example. And just to be sure, I'm going to run Terraform plan again. And then now I'm going to run Terraform Apply. And now that that has completed, let me jump into my AWS web console and check my new AWS resources. So let's go to my browser, head over to AWS, and there's my custom VPC. Now if I go to my subnets, so if I filter this by the VPC, custom VPC that I've created. It will show all public and private subnets. Now that I have VPC to work with, I should now be able to create other Terraform modules that would help set up other services like Elastic Beanstalk, ECS, or any other infrastructure that will support a full stack application. And that's a wrap. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like my content and help me spread the word about this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe.